What's going on, Financial Movers? Today is September 21st, 2020, and as I'm talking to you right now, the market is getting wrecked. But this has actually been going on since about September 2nd of this month, and this is just a continuation of a pattern that we've already been seeing. Now, the question is, are we in a bear market or is this just a correction? So I wanna to talk to you about three things today. One is, can we look at the SPX and the NDX and see from their charts if this is just a correction or a broader pullback? Two, how can we identify stocks using support and resistance lines and to know if it's a good time to enter or not. And three, if we are in a bear market, what are some strategies you can use to still make money? I'm Jacob Barthel, and I did the research. You just have to listen. Now, before we get started, I am going to ask you to please give me a thumbs up if you like this video and hit that subscribe button if you want more content regarding investing, trading, wealth management, finance, and really anything money. All right, so is the market in a broader correction or is this just a fluke that's going on in the month of September? Well, I would like to point out that on average, since 1950 to 2017, the month of September is the worst month for the market. Now, right now, as the market's being sold off, it doesn't look like it's gonna break that trend, but will it reverse? Well, I would like to say that with it being an election year and after the market just had a incredible run up, that it only makes sense for the market to keep being sold off or at least trade sideways for a while because we need a catalyst to get the market to go back up. From mid-March to the beginning of this month in September, the NASDAQ went up 80%. And since it went up 80%, it's dropped over this month another 13% and the SPX from March lows also increased 62% from March to September. And since this month has started, it has also dropped around 8% this month. Now, as I said, we want to know, is this a broader market sell-off or just a fluke that's going on in the month of September? And to know this, we really need to look to the past to understand the present. So let's look at the NASDAQ chart. So here's the NASDAQ on the daily chart and I have it scrolled out so we can really see a broader picture. And we can see that from March lows all the way up to this month, the NASDAQ was up 80%. Now what we want to know is if this is just a broader sell-off or is this a fluke? So to really figure that out, we need to find previous support levels. And where were those previous support levels? Well, as you can see in March lows, this was really clear that this was a support level down here. The price went up here, it went down where it tested support and it would ride this trend until coming up here and went down again to test that support. So is this, this is clearly a support line. But where are the next support lines for us to reference to know if this is just a fluke or a broader market sell-off? Well, the thing is, because the NASDAQ has risen so fast, there are no other support lines along here. Like We could see that this was, looking from the past, that this was a resistance line right here. And looking even further, past beyond that, we can see that this was previous support right there. And this is how we can identify resistance and support lines. So where are they right now for the NASDAQ? Well, as I said, because the NASDAQ has gone up 80% in a short amount of time, there are no other support lines. The best reference we have is been February before the market sold off. The NASDAQ was trading at nearly 10,000 and 9,736. So up until then, and since passing that, we don't really have any other support lines. Now there could be an argument made that there is support along these levels right at 10,400, but we don't really have any other historical evidence to, to show that. So really, the only real support that we know is there is whenever it broke out of this 9,700 mark and went up to test 12,400. So is it possible for this line to keep going down 
until it hits support down here. Well, yeah, that's totally possible. So let's look at the SPX. So as we can see in March, the SPX was all the way down at around 2200, went all the way up to in this month in September to 3,564, it gained 62% from March to September and it is now down at 8.33% and continues to drop today. So once again, we need to look for support lines to understand if this is a broader market sell-off or just a fluke in time right now. Well, looking back, we can see that it had its last previous resistance here at about 3,400, where it was trading at in February before the market sold off. It went up above that line and is now trading below it. So where is the next resistance at or support at for the S&P? Well, we can see back in June of last year, the price was trading. It attempted two times to break out over 3,000. And we can put a line on the 3,000 mark right there. And we can see that this is probably going to be some solid support. And actually in May, whenever the price went up to 3200 and did a sell off it came down and tested the 3000 mark went up again a little bit tested again and then went on its merry way to make all time highs so 3000 does look like it is good support also there is other support uh right along this line which was the 3000 or 2800 mark about yeah around 2800 right here where the price went up whenever it was going to try to test 3,000 the first time, came down, found support along this line, tested the 3,000, came down, tested again, came down. And also whenever the price tried to test 3,000 over here, it found good support at 2,800. So this is the support and resistance lines for the NASDAQ and the SPX or the S&P 500. Now, it does look like this could be a potential broader market sell-off because the lines of support are far away from the resistance lines. I mean, looking at the SPX right now, we can measure from the last support where it had at 3,400, now it's trading at 3,234. It is trading about five, 6% away from next line of support right here at 30 or 3000 it's at 3233 right now and it's trading at about six percent away from that next line of potential support likewise with the nasdaq it is trading at 10740 and it doesn't look like it has any near-term support until it gets down to 10 9729 which is also 8.8 percent away now, these lines are important to note because, as I said, yes, it could be a fluke in the market, but for long term, we do know right now that that looks like it is the best line of support. So a lot of you are asking what stocks are good to buy right now if there is a broader market sell-off. Well, we know that the best stocks in the market have been stocks like Apple, Amazon, and Facebook, and they were gaining over 100% in about six months time, but now they're also losing 20% in less than a month's time. And a lot of people are wanting to know, yourself included, if now is a good time to be buying the dip. Well, now that I just showed you how to put support and resistance lines on the graphs, let's actually look at Facebook, Apple, and Amazon. So going back to the charts, Facebook at its low in March at 134, went all the way up to test $300, which was over a 100% gain at about 122% gain. Likewise, it's now trading at 245, which is a 19% drop, right? So where is Facebook going? Well, we have to look in the past to understand the future. And Facebook looks like it has potential support right here at this line that it is currently trading at, just because that's where we can see that there was a pause before the price could break through around the 246 level. Also, looking back from 2018 all the way till uh, the beginning of this year, 
There was also resistance for Facebook at the 220 mark where it went up in January over 220, fell down, tested it again, and dropped all the way down to $137 before doing its 122% march up. So it does look like there could be some potential support right here at 245. And then I don't believe that it has any other support until it gets down to about 220, 218 dollars. And it's interesting because whenever Facebook dropped in March, you can see where it found this line of support right here. Because looking back historically, you can see where this was a line of support from before. And it was around this $140 mark where it was having difficulty breaking out. And then it broke out over here in 2017, went up higher, went up higher. And then you can see where it doesn't fully go down there to touch that until uh, 2018. But then it finds support, goes up, goes up, goes up. And in 2020 of this year, in March, it found support there once again. So that's Facebook, all right? look at it it looks like it needs support here at 245 or around 220 and then it doesn't have another good near-term support maybe right here at 200 maybe down here at 180 it really just depends but these are the three for sure lines of support it didn't really have enough time to create a lot of support lines because it moved so quickly i i do believe if we look at it like right here there is another line of support because we can see where Facebook actually from 2017 did climb up and use this line. It would try to use it, try to use it right here and here and yeah. So this could be another line of potential support, but these three right here for me are the obvious lines of support for Facebook. If it falls through 245, then I would be interested in seeing if it can gather support here at about 220. So that's Facebook, Apple. Let's look at Apple and see what type of lines of support or resistance it has. So Apple also made a huge climb up from about $52 in March all the way up to, uh, where did it get to? A hundred and, uh, it's not that high, where is it? I believe $134 at the beginning of this month in September. Now it's trading at $105. So where is support for Apple? Well, we can find the long-term support where it got it in May. Looking back at previous highs in 2018, where it was at about $58, and we can see in 2018 how it made a climb up to $58, fell down to support down here at 35, and then made another climb back up, going through that resistance, and then it became support in March down there at 58 where it used to be resistance. It became support and made its climb higher. Now, because Apple has risen 136% in such a short time, it didn't really stop to make any other lines of support. All right? It just kept going higher, higher, and higher. So there are two important lines to look at. One does seem to be more of a confirmation for support, which is the price of where it was trading at in February before the price sold off. Right here in February of 2020, it was trading at about $80. So $80 is looking like it could be its nearest price support level where it went from 58 all the way up to 130. It could potentially go all the way back down to 80. Now, there could be a closer line of support right here at 100. A lot of people believe that this 100 is going to be a support level because it's a psychological support and that's where the stock gapped up higher on earnings and then went on to create new levels of high. I'm not so convinced that this is going to be strong support. We're already really close trading at $105 and it's getting very near to this 100 line, but who knows, today it is actually getting some good volume and creating a bullish ticker or a bullish candlestick, so it could potentially bounce right here, but if it falls through this line, then I am definitely looking for Apple to be bought up, not until it gets to this 80 price mark. 
So we have the first line of support right here at about $100, the next line down here about 80, and then if it gets really crazy, who knows, maybe it could come down here to 58, but that's if we are in a 100% bull market. Now the last one I wanna look at, Amazon, ticker symbol AMZN. All right, Amazon, also in March, it had a major run up from $1,600 all the way up to 3,550, doing a 118% gain. So where are support levels for Amazon? Once again, kind of like Apple, it rose so quickly that it was hard for this stock to create good support anywhere. We do know, looking off previous price history, that right here at this 100, 1,500, 1,600 mark, I'm sorry, there is a good line of support. Now, where is the other support at? Well, there could be support right here where this used to be resistance at the 2,000 mark for Amazon. That's probably another line of support, as you can see, where it bounces through those two lines over and over and over before ripping higher. So where are closer lines of support? Because 2,000 is far away from 2,894. Well, that is hard to know. I mean, there could be lines here at 2,400. There could be some mark here at 2,800. But there's no good way to tell because the price went up, but it only traded in consolidation for such a short time that it is nearly impossible to know if these are any good actual levels of support. If we are in a bear market and you still want to invest and make money, what is the best way to do it? Well, you can do one of two things. Either you can, actually you can do three things. You can A, not do anything at all, just wait and sit on your hands. You can B, start shorting stocks from where they are right now. If they start falling through price levels, price support, and you think they're gonna go down to the next resistance or the next support levels, then you could start shorting the stocks, which is risky and you will want to do some research to find a good strategy for that. And the, I wanna say three, but I think I've been doing letters, so C, C, letter C. What can you do on letter C? Well, you can average your buying, I just feel like I'm saying that weird. You can average your buying power or whenever you're buying your stocks. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's take a look back at the Apple uh, charts. So Apple was all the way up at $130. So if you wanna average this out, because it's going to be nearly impossible to time a bottom, then you could start buying it right here at 105 or maybe at $100. But don't go 100% in with your account. Now, if it starts to fall, and you are thinking, well, I could have bought it cheaper. Well, it's probably a good idea to not sell your shares, but wait till it does fall to this next level of support and buy more shares. And then it will actually average out the amount of Apple you own between $100 to $80. You'll get an average price of $90 if you buy the same amount at the $100 support mark that you buy at the $80 dollar support mark and if it falls through there and you want to buy more apple then you could pick it up at sixty dollars right so you can get apple at this level of a hundred dollars the next support level of eighty dollars and the last support level of thirty dollars and god forbid that it actually falls all the way down to uh thirty five dollars which i highly doubt that it would do that so that is how you average out your buying you never want to put all of your money in at one time because you don't know if it will go lower and it's impossible to time the bottoms of the stock market or any stock at all. So if you just average it out, eventually you will catch the bottom and you'll average out the price per share that you paid for. If you bought it at 100, if you bought 10 shares at 100, you bought 10 at 80 and then you bought another 10 at 60, then obviously it would be the average of all of those, which I think would be about $80 per share. So those are your three options in the market right now if the market is in a bearish market and continues to drop. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and share it with anybody you think would also profit from watching this video. I'm Jacob Barthel, and I did the research. You just had to listen.